Okay, so we're taking a look at, at inequalities, how to solve them, how to understand what they mean. And I want us now to take a look at rational inequalities. These are inequalities where, in fact, in the inequality, we actually see a ratio of quantities, often where the x's are both upstairs in the numerator and downstairs in the denominator. So here I have 3x plus 5 divided by x plus 1 less than or equal to 2. Here's a great mistake. A great mistake is to say, OK, when is the bottom equal to 0? When is the top equal to 0? And let's go through and look at the things and see and so forth. But that only works once you have an inequality where this side actually is 0. So the first step here, this is a great, great potential place for a mistake, is to bring the 2 over. And so I see 3x plus 5 divided by x plus 1 minus 2 is less than or equal to 0. So there's the 0. Now I can actually do what we proposed. So first thing I have to do is get a common denominator. So if you get a common denominator, then what do you do? Well, uh, this is an 2 over an invisible 1. So I'll multiply numerator and denominator by the quantity x plus 1. And when I do that, what would this look like? This would look like this. 3x plus 5 over x plus 1. Nothing changes here. Then minus, and then I have to have a 2 times x plus 1, which is going to be 2x plus 2, all divided by x plus 1. And now I subtract. Now you have to remember to subtract everybody. A great mistake is just to take the 3x minus 2x and then 5 plus 2. But that's wrong. You have to remember that negative sign has to hit everybody. Everybody. Subtract everything. Don't be modest. So 3x minus 2x is just x. 5 minus 2 is actually plus 3. And that's all over x plus 1. And that's less than or equal to 0. And now I'm off and running. This is the thing I'm going to consider not the original. And now, what are my critical points here? They're going to be places where the numerator is equal to 0 or where the denominator is equal to 0. The numerator is equal to 0 when x plus 3 equals 0 or x equals negative, x equals negative 3. So I put a circle right there, and that's a 0 point. And then where is the denominator equal to 0? Where is this undefined when x plus 1 equals 0, which x uh, equals negative 1? So x equals negative 1. I put an undefined there. And now I've got these three regions to consider. So what do I do with the three regions? I pick some points and take a look. So we can actually do that right here. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, plug in, let's say, negative 4. So I plug in negative 4. Uh, what happens? Well, the numerator is negative. The denominator is negative. Negative over negative is, in fact, a positive, which is not less than or equal to 0. So we don't like that. So we're not going to include that. That's a bad one. What if we pick the only point that's easy to pick between negative 3 and negative 1 that I can see that's easy is negative 2. Let's throw in a negative 2 here. Negative 2 plus 3 is positive. It equals 1. But negative 2 plus 1 is negative. It equals negative 1. So positive divided by a negative is actually a negative, which is less than or equal to 0. So in fact, this is a good thing. I want to include that region that contains negative 2, which is this little thing. So it kind of looks like a little um, barbell, doesn't it? Like a little weight that you could do a little, you know. Now what about here? Let's just pick 0. And then, of course, you see that it's 3 over 1, which is 3. 3. 3 is not less than or equal to 0, so this is no good. So the only region we care about is going to be this region in between. And now what about the endpoints? Now, what happens with the endpoints? Well, since notice the inequality is less than or equal to 0, I'm allowed to have the numerator equal 0. And where was that again? That's where uh, the numerator equals 0, the 0 is here. So I can actually color that in. So visually, I color that in, which means I'm allowed to actually take on that point. But I can't take on negative 1, because that's where the denominator is 0. That's where the whole thing is undefined. So the way I'd write this is, is this graphically. If you want to write it in this kind of nice little bracket notation, I'd say we're looking at points between negative 3 and negative 1. We include negative 3, which use, I use a little brace like this. That means you actually can touch it, but you can touch negative 1. So I use the open parentheses. Isn't that great? OK, let's just try one more together, because I know that these are fun to think about. And they're challenging. I'm not pretending this is easy, by the way. I think these are challenging, but doable. You can do it. So here, there's lots of action going on here. But you know exactly what you want to do. We want to have one rational thing 
and then less than or greater than or whatever, zero on the other side. So bring everybody over to the left-hand side. That's the first step. Don't be fooled by something like this if they throw this at you. You say, I am up for this challenge. I subtract this, that's minus 4x over 2x plus 1, and I subtract the negative 3, or add both 3 to both sides, it's a plus 3, and then the sign remains the same, it's still greater than, but now it's 0. There's nothing left, I got everything out, it's 0. Now I've got to combine things, so combining this is, is no problem because they have the same bottom already. So I have an x minus 4x, that gives me a negative 3, x minus 5, all over that common bottom. The problem is the 3 is over an invisible 1. So how do I deal with that? I get a common denominator by multiplying the numerator and denominator by 2x plus 1. When I multiply the numerator by 2x plus 1, I see 3 times that, which is going to be 3 times 2, which is 6x plus 3, because the 1 times 3 is 3, over the bottom 2x plus 1. And now I can combine the numerator. So I have negative 3x plus 6x, that gives me a 3x, and then I have a minus 5 plus 3, which is negative 2, all divided by the common bottom. Great, and now I'm in position to actually do the analysis. So what I want to do now is I want us to think through 3x minus 2 divided by 2x plus 1 greater than 0, and I want us to now uh, consider the critical points. So the points are where the numerator equals 0. That happens when uh, 3x minus 2 equals 0. So that means that x would have to equal 2 thirds. And then the other place that we have to uh, now avoid is when the bottom equals 0, when x, uh, 2x plus 1 equals 0, or x equals minus 1 half. And so uh, we put that together on a little number line to keep score of where we are. And so I see uh, 2 thirds. So here's 0, 2, here's 1. So 2 thirds will be 2 thirds of the way toward 1, which is going to be right over here. And that's going to be where the numerator is 0, so that's an actual 0. And then when x equals negative a half, this thing is undefined. So negative a half, it's right in between negative 1 and 0. That's undefined. So I have three regions to consider. Let's consider them together. So first, why don't we pick um, for the region a little bit to the left of the undefined point, we pick negative 1. So plug in negative 1 here, negative 1 here. All I care about is the sign. 3 times negative 1, that's negative. Negative minus 2, that's negative. So I've got a negative upstairs. And negative 2 plus 1 is negative. So I have a negative over negative, which is a positive, which means that that is bigger than 0. So it checks. So we like that. So I want to actually include not only negative 1, but everything in that range, which is everything to the left of the negative a half. Then I pick something in between these two, which is plainly 0 is an easy thing to look at. And that's negative 2 over 1. And negative over a positive is, is plainly a negative. So in fact, this is going to be no good. So this is no good. Don't include that little piece in there. And then something a little bit bigger than 2 thirds. How about 1? 3 minus 2 is positive. 2 plus 1 is positive. Positive over positive is a positive. So in fact, I want to include that region too, the region to the right, the right region. And so now, what about uh, the, the col coloring in? Well, we never color in where this thing is undefined, because you can't plug in that. It would make this thing undefined. What about this? This is where it makes this thing 0. Am I allowed to have this be 0? Well, if that's 0, is 0 strictly larger than 0? No. So since there's strict inequality here, we do not include uh, that, that uh, value. And so how would you write the solution? You might want to write the solution as all the points as small as you want, so from negative infinity all the way up to negative a half. But you can't include it because it's undefined there. Together with or union all of these values. That means the values that start at 2 thirds and race all the way off to infinity. And do we include 2 thirds? No, because that makes this 0, which is out of the solution set. And so I see this interesting union, or visually this. So solving the rational inequalities, not a big deal at all. We just have to make sure that we have one big rational expression with an inequality symbol and 0 on the other side, and then carefully analyze where the numerator equals 0, those are the 0 points, where the denominator equals 0, that's where it's undefined, and then that cuts the real line up into regions, analyze each region by just picking a representative, and if that representative is in, the whole region's in. That representative's out, the whole region's out, 
put it all together, analyze those little endpoints, and you're good to go. I'll see you soon.